Hey, what's going on guys? John here, and today I'm actually going to be doing a video review for the TP-Link OC200. This is a hardware controller that you can use with the Omada um, line of products that TP-Link provides. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is actually walk you through my network setup, and then we're gonna head over to my computer that I have outside my office, and I'll actually walk you through some of the controller settings, give you a few recommendations, and just give you an overall idea of what to expect with this controller. So first off, um, I'm actually currently in the basement of our property. We have a large, um, basically two story type building. We have a basement and a uh, main story of the house. And the reason I went with this hardware controller is I wanted something that I could control multiple access points all throughout the home without worrying about my Wi-Fi signal. And this has actually allowed me to do just that. So um, starting with the setup here, uh, basically, we have a Netgear Nighthawk router. This is a Wi-Fi 6 router. So essentially, this is connected directly to my Verizon box that I have here. This really I have set up as an SSID that essentially just broadcasts for the basement um, only. So down here, I've got a few things. There's a hardwired computer that my wife uses. We have um, a large TV here, a PS5, and that's more or less it. So in terms of Wi-Fi, I connect all the devices to this Netgear device, but everything else in the house, I either have wired up or I needed the ability to have Wi-Fi access. And we have a very, very large garage, which I'll show you here in a bit. Um, but basically in terms of the box itself, you have a locking mechanism on the back. You have a USB connection if you wanted to utilize power to this. Um, I have it powered through PoE. So what I did is I got this, um, this is actually a four port PoE switch. It has two additional VLAN ports which can just be used as additional network ports. So I've, I have five of these plugged in. Essentially we have an NVIDIA Shield plugged in. This goes back to the uh, Netgear router. I then have these two cables, one of which leads all the way over to our apartment and I'll show you that here. This one connects to one of the wireless access points upstairs, which I'll kind of point out as to where that is. And then this one, um, I believe actually connects to um, the, this is actually connecting to the hardware controller itself. So that pretty much gives me everything there in terms of wireless capability. I have some other hardwired devices here, such as this curb device. Um, I've got a hardwired computer, a few other things all connected up to the Netgear. Now let's actually go through the property and I'll give you some idea of what to expect. Um, before I do that as well, I did want to provide a little bit of insight on the back of this device. Essentially you have one PoE in port. So in my case, I'm just using the PoE out on the actual hardware switch here. That goes into this, and then you have a uh, 100 by 100 ethernet port. So I don't use this because we're not gonna get full gigabit out of it, and essentially I don't need it because we have the, the 1000 gigabit switch here. You do also have a reset button, and then there's a USB connection option if for any reason you wanted to add that. I think you could um, you know, connect other devices that are USB based like hard drives or things like that for firmware updates or storage or anything of that nature. So in terms of um, going through the proper let's kind of do that now I'll give you some idea of what to expect I'm not gonna go into every room but we'll take a brief moment outside and I'll actually just walk you through everything so again we're connecting most of the devices um, like these all to that Netgear device but I'm gonna head outside actually out through the back be a little dark here for a second and I'll show you the front of the property just so you have some idea as to what I decided to do in terms of our setup so i'm basically in the back of my property now and we have this huge garage where i actually have um, a tenant that stays above in a finished apartment so i'm going to kind of walk out to our driveway and i'll just give you some idea here so i was just over in the basement over here this is the main part of the house and then we have this absolutely massive garage over here on the right side so this is all detached um, essentially what i have is in that room where we just were, I have that uh, network cable that runs all the way down the ceiling, and then it actually goes up this deck here where I'm pointing, underneath this um, portion of the unfinished deck here inside, and then it actually runs all the way across up here to an EAP-235, which is a wall-based Amada unit. I also have, in one of the bedrooms over here, in the main part of the house, I have um, one of those network cables connected to an EAP670, which is a Wi-Fi 6-based device, has really good range. 
So that basically is providing all the Wi-Fi for the top of the house if you're out on the deck. Um, technically, if you're out here in the yard, that's really going to provide a lot of that Wi-Fi for the entire house. Now, additionally, what I did is I ran into our garage a couple other things. So I want to show like the full chain. So we have that wire that runs all the way up here, um, basically above that section. It then comes down actually over here and um, you can see all the wires up here basically runs from pretty much this corner all the way down and then I actually have it going into another 235 wall unit which I have over here I'll just kind of show briefly so this is the other EAP 235 so I have two of those and then I actually have this guy connecting to a wall plate and that then comes out on this side of the wall where I basically have storage and it actually runs up the wall here goes across down over and then I actually have this going into a switch another switch that's just a four port switch um, right down here and this then has two computers hardwired to it which I use for uh, basically racing simulators we have some fun here with parties and stuff and then I have one of those actually running a wire this way and this is basically the final point of the chain which I have a fourth access point and this is the EAP 670. So um, basically inside the house, I have another one of these. And to sum it up, I've got the 235 wall unit up in the apartment and then the other one down here in this office. So essentially what that hardware controller allows me to do is I'm able to roam anywhere between the property, whether or not I'm in that office, I'm in the apartment, I'm in the garage here, I'm in the driveway, I'm in the house. I'm going to have a roaming signal for, uh, for this. So that OC200 allows me to control all of this. So I'm actually gonna run over here now to my office. We'll take a look at my computer and I'll show you some of the options on the hardware controller. So I've already pulled this up and pretty much um, this is what it looks like when you've got everything connected. So I have a hardware-based control, obviously that's what we have. You can set this up in the cloud. So that's exactly what I did. So you can log into it as long as it's connected. If I was you know, not home and maybe I needed to do something uh, with the network, I could technically do that. Um, you have all of your options over here on the right. So essentially you can launch this and this now gives you access. If you come over here, you can see we have all four of the access points and I'm able to load this. And you can see over here, we have the garage AP, which is the one outside to the left of me. We have our garage um, office, which is the one right down here next to me. And then we also have the garage apartment one, which is above me, as well as that house one, which I mentioned. So essentially, um, I'm powering, I'm sending PoE all the way up to that apartment one, which sends PoE down to this one. And then I'm actually running the one up on that beam um, with physical power and just a straight network cable off that switch. So I don't need the PoE going to that one. So overall, this, this setup worked out perfectly. Um, you have the ability with this, you can update firmware. Um, anytime you provision any of these, you will need to re-enable PoE uh, for any of these. In order to do that, you can essentially go into the settings, go to config. This will load up. And in this case, if you go to advanced, you have this Ethernet 3 PoE out setting. So you will need to power this. Um, you don't want to, you know, basically pass the PoE chain more than one time. So essentially I'm using the switch to then power one of the PoEs and then uh, one of the EAP wall units and then the one that's upstairs is now sending a PoE down to my second wall unit. I cannot add like a third wall unit in this particular scenario, which is basically what it's referencing here is to do not, you know, enable it when the AP itself is powered by another access point. Um, the other thing you can do with this, which is really cool is in this particular scenario, if I wanted to set up a mesh network, I could actually connect my garage AP to my house AP and have these be mesh. So if I wanted um, the garage unit, I could have technically not run a wired cable to it, but because I had the ability to run it up on that beam, it really wasn't a big deal. It made sense to do that. Um, so I don't have mesh enabled, but you can actually um, set these up as a mesh. Another thing that's a little bit of a flaw in my setup here is these wall units do not support Wi-Fi 6. TP-Link does make a wall unit um, that, that can. I really love these. They're almost more designed for like hotels and things like that. 
but um, what's actually happening currently with this setup is if I'm sitting in this room, I'm actually connecting all the way up on that garage unit, which is still plenty fast, but ultimately I'd wanna go um, with one of the newer wall units that TP-Link provides. The other thing that you can do with all these units is if you go into your settings, so I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom left, go to settings, um, if you go all the way down to your advanced features, this is something you'll have to enable, you can turn on what's called fast roaming. So this fast roaming feature is basically gonna allow you, it even gives you a description here. It says, with this feature enabled, clients that support 802.11k slash V can improve fast roaming experience when moving among different APs. So if I walk up to the apartment, um, it's basically in theory going to connect me to the wall unit up there. Um, if I move you know, back over to the house, it's gonna connect me to the AP that's inside. And um, yeah, overall, this really, really gives you a lot of control over your network. You get a lot of data and statistics. I'm still able to use that gaming router. Um, I can set up restrictions on IP addresses, things like that. I actually had to do that for those racing computer chairs I have out there um, to limit you know, some of the setup I'm doing out there. But overall, I'm very, very happy with this. Um, to give you some idea, if we go out on my property, the Wi-Fi signal is actually so powerful. We'll even do this as a little demo here to conclude this. Just to give you some idea of how well the network connects. If we head out here, so we have the EAP 670. Um, you can actually manage all of this right on your phone. And I wanted to show you a demo of basically what the connectivity looks like. So we have an app here that we can use to manage the controller in the same way. You're not gonna see quite as much as you would on the desktop, but you have more than enough. You can see I have all the EAPs, uh, all the access points here. But if we head outside, right now um, I'm connected to the network um, and essentially I have this set up where it broadcasts the same SSID on all the devices. So um, anything I connect to, any of the access points I connect to, it's going to immediately give me a connection um, on that same SSID. So no matter um, you know which I connect to as I roam, it's gonna immediately reconnect as I move throughout the property and I don't have to like change to a different SSID. So what I wanted to show here is if I go to clients, uh, this is actually the easiest way to do it. So I'm gonna go to the garage, which I know is what I'm probably connected to now. If I go to users, you can see it has John's cell phone. So I'm currently connected to that. And um, you can see Wi-Fi is enabled. I'm gonna actually open up a Wi-Fi browser here. And I've, already, I've got fast.com set up. So this gives me a Wi-Fi test. So now going back here, you can see um, that EAP all the, way, all the way in the center of the garage here. If I walk down, go all the way to like the front of my property here. So I'm walking pretty far away, right? Like the fact that I could still have Wi-Fi, you can see it's still fully connected. I have all my bars. I'm basically now all the way at the furthest point I could get from my property. And if I do a refresh here on the Wi-Fi, I'm still pushing um, almost 300 Mbps. So we have a gigabit internet here. So I'm basically getting a third of that power this far away. So we could be you know, out here gardening, mowing the lawn, whatever, um, and we're still gonna have full connection that far away. So that gives you some idea of the connectivity. Anyway, I wanted to do a detailed review so you guys had some idea of what to expect. Again, very, very fast. I'm super happy with this setup. I love that I can roam throughout the property. All my devices are connecting to the same SSID. And then I also have full management so I really can control anything in terms of you know, allowing, disallowing users, um, all the different settings that you would want. So again, highly would recommend if you're looking to get the OC200 controller and have a full Amata setup where you could cover a very large property, this would work quite well. Um, if I really wanted to boost this as well, another thing I thought about doing just to kind of conclude this would have been running an outdoor network cable, burying it on the ground, and then running it all the way down this fence to that corner um, in our garden and they offer an Amata uh, outdoor unit as well. So if I really wanted to get you know, maximum uh, Wi-Fi out here, maybe for security cameras or anything like that, which we do have all around the property, that would be another option you could do as well um, you know, if you wanted to connect that via PoE. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Hopefully you guys found this helpful and um, I will talk to you later.